Hello, brothers and sisters. It is time that I reveal my God-given, most high-given, Yahweh's given true name. And he's given me the name Jedaniah. And this happened uh, a little over a year ago. So I've been knowing for a while. I've been waiting f for some reason to reveal that. But anyway, I'm revealing it. And this is the name he gave me. And it came to me in a dream. Now, you to understand this dream, you have to understand how the Most High looks at Israel. Israel is his woman. Just like when he gave his son Israel, they became his bride, the bride of Christ, is Israel. Considered the woman. Christ is the bridegroom. Israel is the bride. That's whom he came to save and die for their sins. And that can be proven biblically. Now, it doesn't mean that the Gentiles cannot receive salvation. They can. But the Bible deals directly with the 12 tribes of Israel who were to teach the rest of the world and the other nations because the Most High has an order. It's the Most High, His Son, then Israel, then the other nations. And His Son was the mediator to bring us back to the Heavenly Father as His inheritance his personal inheritance, whom he has chosen, and that is written. But the other nations were to be given to us as our inheritance. He said that order works. Many people don't like that, but it is what it is. We are his inheritance, and the other nations are our inheritance. And when Christ return and redeem us, bring us back to our land, set us up, we will be the kings and priests of the earth. And that was spoken in Revelations, where everyone else was thinking it was talking about them rising up to be kings and priests of the earth. It was talking about us. It was always about us. So we will rule with Christ during the millennium reign, which many don't believe in. But I said all that. To let you know that the Most High's bride, whom he has chosen, is Israel, and he is rising us up, renaming us, giving us our names, our God, our Yah given names, and returning us back to him, according to Ezekiel 37. So the bride of Christ is the most highest. So back to the dream. In this dream, this little baby girl was presented to me. And so when I woke up, I was thinking, okay, am I going to have another child, another little girl, and have to rename her Jedaniah? I mean, because in the dream, it, the name Jedaniah came to me for this baby, this little girl. Rename, or am I got to rename my daughter Jedaniah? Or I was, I was going through my thoughts, and then, you know, through prayer, it came to me. No, this is you. The bride of Christ, the woman, except for you're in a in a childlike state as a baby baby bride, baby little girl, Jedaniah, growing. And I got the sense that 
I've grown up and now I'm well into the acceptable age of marriage and womanhood <laughs> in the Israelite sense, in the biblical sense. So the most I came at me in that direction. Uh, he may not come at others in that particular direction, but he came at me in this direction. And that name came to me, Jedediah. And once I understood that, hey, he was talking about me being a bride of Christ. Because in the past, in 2012, on the day of my birth in 2012, or what we would call my birthday, a still small voice in my head said, Will you marry me? And this was right before I was first getting married to a woman I wasn't supposed to be with marrying. It's like 10, to, 10 days before that day. Where, where he said, will you marry me? You know, marry me first. That's the exact word he said. Marry me first. Which he was asking me to marry him. And I had the nerve to think about it, y'all. <laughs> like, what? What was that? And, you know, of course, I had to think for a minute. Wait a minute, man. What was that? Christ? Yeah. Okay. And then I said, okay, yeah, I will. Then it came to me to not to to. Um, Put off the wedding. And so I did. And believe me, the real evil part of this woman came out after that. <laughs> but he was right. And not only did he save me in that way, but he saved me from going into a marriage where there was there was no faithfulness and no trust and the person I would be marrying. But anyway, that's another story. But Christ himself proposed to me that day. Now, here's something else I'm going to reveal. Not only my name, but when I first decided to celebrate my first Sabbath day, that same year in September, it was the middle of September. It could have been right on the, the blowing of the trumpets. So I didn't understand those dates then, but it was in the middle of September. And that was right around that time. More of the blowing of the trumpets. It could have been on the same day. That Friday night, I said, you know what? I'm going to do this from Friday night, like the Bible say. At dawn, at dusk, begins the Sabbath day. I mean, begins the next day, which was the Sabbath day. So I did it. I honored that for the first time in my life. And that was like 20 something days before my birthday. And that very night, Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, came to me, of course, through his Holy Spirit, his angels, one of his holy angels, but he anointed me and wrote his name across my forehead. And when I woke up after that, oh, uh, I knew exactly what he did, and I was just praising him. And I was still right there in, in my house with the woman whom I was going to marry. Uh, and he anointed me and wrote his name across my forehead. And it wasn't until later on I understood what happened because, you know, I was reading the scriptures, and then I 
finally got up to Revelations, and I was reading Revelations 3, chapter 11, uh, where you would have, you know, you'll be sealed. Well, somewhere in there, Revelations, uh, I forgot which chapter. Chapter 5, where he seals the saints. No, 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 that's chapter 7. We seals the hundred and forty four thousand, puts a mark upon the head so they would not be hurt or harmed. But then you got Revelations chapter three and eleven, which says that he will write his name across your forehead. Well, I actually had that happen. And it kinda explains why I've been really different than most people. I mean there are some things that, I mean, I, I understand now where I've been so set apart from so many people. It's so obvious. No matter where I go, no matter what job I work, family, friends, neighbors, whatever, set apart, strong set apart. Even though I've done my dirt and did my sins, still set apart. And it's even more apparent now, now that I'm in truth. Serious separation. Even from my own Hebrews, you know what I mean? Now, I'm not sitting there saying I'm a 144,000. I guess that would be revealed in its own time. But I also had, um, well, I ain't going to tell that one. But anyway, my name is Jedaniah. I'm going to change it on my channel. Just wanted y'all to know, you know, let you know some extra things. Uh, but don't sit there and treat me any different. I'm still in the struggle. I still have to endure like everybody else. I still have to fight. I still have to implement all of his laws into my life. And I'm, and I'm doing all that. I'm struggling with it. And I'm fighting it. And I'm doing it. Still understanding. Getting understanding. Like I'm. One of the things I'm starting to truly understand. That this book was truly just written to the Israelites. And it's been taking some time for me to let go of that. That can't we all just get along spirit. <laughs> it's been hard to. Oh we're all God's children. We're all equal in the eyes of God. It takes time to let go of that teaching that you're taught by the Greeks and the Romans who have deceived you into believing that you're not special, you're not his chosen, that we are all special, we are all chosen, we are all called. No. That book specifically always have said, the Israelites, I'm starting to really peel away that in that seed of Christianity that's been embedded so deep into my mind that it's hard to let go. It's hard to sit there and say, you know what? Those other nations are my enemies. Not certain individuals from those nations, but the nations themselves as a whole, as a complete people, they are my enemies. But there are people within those nations that are not. There are certain individuals within those nations. That is my understanding from reading the scriptures too. It's not just my thoughts here. This is my understanding from the scriptures. And that's why we have certain, we are given certain commandments concerning the stranger and the other nations that not only come within our house, our borders, but those are without our borders. We have certain laws and commandments concerning that. 
And I'm starting to, I'm starting to understand why the Most High needs his people, his chosen inheritance, to be a holy nation. Because we're going to be the ones within holy Jerusalem, in his courts, in his house, living amongst them. Not the Gentiles. There's only 12 gates. There's no Gentile gate into that holy building. Now, I don't know where the Gentiles are going to be, be at. Maybe on the outside of it. I don't know. But so far, I haven't read in the scriptures that the Gentiles, the other nations, would be inside the house of the Most High, his personal house, his personal city that would come down from the heavens. I haven't read it. If y'all have read that particularly, show me by scripture, not by your heart, not by your thoughts, not by what you was taught. Bring a Bible verse out that says this. Specifically, I don't want to hear no interpretation some off verse that's interpreted. I want to hear it said. So, and don't get me wrong. I am for not only the Hebrew Israelites, 12 tribes, but also the individuals that are coming out of the other nations that will come to serve the Most High. And by serving the Most High, they will be serving us. That will be your mission during the thousand year reign of Christ. See, we are to serve the Most High in Christ. In our land. And you, the other nations, the other Gentiles, the individuals who chose not to follow their people, but follow the Most High, you would serve us in the kingdom as servants and handmaids, as just as scripture foretold, foretells. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Read it. And it says it all over the book where the other nations will serve Israel while we serve the Most High. But in all, we are serving the Most High's plan complete plan of salvation for Israel and the other nations. It's just that we had to go through a 2,000 year punishment. As the Most High said, I will punish you double for your sins. So we've been punished double. But now that that time is up, he's going to punish the other nations for 1,000 years. Because they had not known the Father like we have been shown and known the Father. So they own, their punishment is only for a thousand years under Christ. What Christ said he will rule with the rod, rod of iron. He's going to rule. You have to read the scriptures with a new understanding, which is an old understanding, actually. You have to read the scriptures with the old understanding, not with the new wine of Christianity, which sprung from this Catholicism when the Catholic Church created the popes and started adding in all this paganism and changing things and changing images and Destroying the word of God, period. And making this whole nother other version of Christianity. Using the Bible itself. Deceiving the whole world. So these are just added things to my statement. To give you more understanding of my growth. And it's really, it has nothing to do with skin color has everything to do with the Most High's version of what's written in the book and his choosing of a nation of people out of all the nations of the world and lifting them up above 
in which Christ came as well, which Christ is lifted up above us. He's the only begotten son, and he died for the sins of Israel. But through a fall, it says salvation has come to the Gentiles. How? When he saves us and brings us back to our land, then your punishment will begin. And your salvation will be brought forth then. Now, for those individuals who have learned the truth, follow the truth, understand the truth, want the truth, they are woken up and they truly are standing alone out there. The other Gentiles, they, they are hated. Because they're out there preaching and teaching the real word of God. They understand who the real Israelites are. And they are really trying to get people to wake up. All right, brothers and sisters. Hope I bless you. Added some more knowledge and wisdom to you. Shalom.